What's up everybody? You're here with the Fly Guy. Okay, today we are going to be tying one of my favorite carp flies, the carp crawler. And this is a juvenile crayfish imitation. Uh, the tying recipe can be found on my blog and website at tfgflies.com. And I will put links to the materials in the description of this video. I've already started this video with the eyes already attached. Uh, I do use a small set of dumbbell eyes for this fly uh, so that it rides hook point up and provides some weight. If you would like to learn how to attach dumbbell eyes to your flies, I will put a link in the description for you to a video that will show you how to do that. So we're going to start by attaching a small clump of craft fur to the back of the hook. It needs to be one and a half to two times the length of the hook shank and you just want to make sure that you trim off that access. Uh, but make sure that you do tie it back to the dumbbell eyes because it'll create an even body later on in the fly. Next we're going to attach some rubber legs. Uh, you want to start with brown first uh, because this fly will be flipped upside down in the water so you want the brown on top and then we will attach the orange legs after. Make sure that you tie them in so that they are slightly separated from the craft fur. Uh, and that they form a Y shape on the back of the fly. Uh, this will give the look uh, that a crayfish has, uh, as well as keeping those rubber legs from just running straight in line with the craft fur, so that both those materials move independently of one another in the water. Here you can notice me changing thread colors. You can tie this fly with whatever thread that you want, but I like to finish it off with some brown thread. And we'll move right on into our next step and attach our shell back. This is made out of a material called pheno skin, and we have to tie this in first uh, because we're going to pull it back over top of everything that we wrap down next. You'll want to cut a point into the end, bubble it, and tie it down uh, and make sure that you check uh, that you have tied all the way back to your previous thread wraps uh, so you don't have exposed thread later on in the pattern. After you get your shell back on, go ahead and make a fairly long dubbing loop. I would say uh, three to four times the length of your hook shank. And you will then progress to the uh, middle of the hook and tie in a set of brown rubber legs. Uh, you're going to tie them in the exact same way you did uh, at the beginning of the fly. And there's really no need to cut them to length yet. We'll do that at the end. Uh, after you add in uh, those rubber legs, you're going to want to attach a rib. You can use wire, mono, uh, here. Uh, for this fly, I actually use my clear uh, thread that I use because it's super durable. And uh, that will then make the segmentation later on in the fly. Pull the set of brown rubber legs backward along with your ribbing material. Make one securing wrap to hold it out of the way. And we'll start filling our dubbing loop. I like to use a rust colored dubbing mix uh, that I blend myself and it's just got a really good craw coloration. Uh, fill up your dubbing loop, spin it together, uh, and wrap it down to create your body. When you get to the brass eyes, you should need to create a new dubbing loop. Uh, just make a little short one and make sure that you fill this dubbing loop just a little bit more sparse uh, than what you did the first time. Uh, this will enable you to actually make clean wraps around the dumbbell eyes and you don't have any problems with wraps coming undone. Figure eight wrap around the dumbbell eyes, tie off your dubbing loop, and let's finish this fly up. Now is the time to pull that shell back over top of the dubbing we just tied down. And you're gonna do this right up to the hook eye. You wanna make sure that you just apply enough tension to where that pheno skin stretches a little bit and keep it under that tension with your thread wraps. After you're finished tying down your shell back, you'll want to make sure to take that rib and create three even segments in the body and then tie it down. After whip finishing and brushing out your dubbing, go ahead and add your favorite head cement. 
And that's it. That's the carp crawler. It's a great carp fly. I use this a lot in rivers and streams uh, where I can see them actively feeding and I know they're going to be feeding on crayfish actively, which is pretty much most of the season. Don't forget that you can get the tying recipe for this fly on my website and blog at tfgflies.com and make sure to check out the materials if there's something there that you don't have. Um, I've got links in the description for you so you can get some of those as well. If you have any questions about this pattern, feel free to comment below or send me an email. My contact information is on my website. If you like this video, go ahead and hit thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more fly tying and fly fishing content. Thanks again for watching everybody. Take care and we'll catch you next time.